So this is the Obrus Morgan Aegis. Uh, I'm doing this video because I recently had dinner with a friend who is somewhat into watches and they asked me about this watch. I was wearing it at the time, obviously, and I realized soon after that I have owned this watch for six months. And you don't really see a lot of them. They are kind of hard to get a hold of uh, because they're produced in, in limited amounts. So you really have to be on top of, uh, of them when they get released. Sign up for the e-newsletter, the e uh, you know, refresh their website multiple times a day, um, that kind of thing. But I've really enjoyed owning this watch for six months and wanted to just give some of my quick thoughts on it, especially because I also have another Obris Morgan, the Bronco, which I will briefly talk about at the end of this. And I've owned that watch for probably three or four years. And I'm pretty sure that I've worn the ages more in six months than the Bronco in three or four years. Now they are, to me, different watches. They serve different uh, purposes, different styles. So that's one of the big reasons why I wear this one uh, a lot more frequently. That's kind of the reason that I bought it was to be sort of my daily wearer. Um, but let's dive into some of the, the features of the watch, some of the, the specs. So it's a Miyota Automatic 9015, uh, 28,800 beats per hour, uh, 8 beats per second. Stainless steel case, uh, 316L. Sapphire crystal, uh, helium escape valve, 200 meter water resistance, super luminova on the indices and the watch hands and you can get it in kind of three flavors either brushed blasted or the dlc it's 42 millimeter diameter 11.5 millimeter case thickness uh, 20 millimeter lug width and weighs 219 grams so when you order the, uh, the Obers Morgan Aegis, what do you get? You get this fancy uh, bright orange Pelican style case. Uh, it says Aegis on the front. It's got a pressure release valve on the front there um, or on the side. It's uh, nice snaps, pretty, pretty uh, hefty. Uh, I haven't tried to put anything in here to test the uh, waterproofness of the case. It does have a rubber gasket on it. I've actually thought about using it as a Pelican case for the Micro Four Thirds camera that I'm shooting this with. So maybe I will, uh, I'll get to that and let you guys know how it works. So inside, it's nice and padded. Um, for me, I think probably they send you this because it's a good conversation piece. It, it makes you, um, kind of appreciate the fit and finish of the watch, the construction of it, you know, kind of it's a whole package deal. Um, but it also serves as great protection because these watches are coming from Hong Kong. Uh, you get the instruction manual, which inside is kind of cool, uh, kind of has some like lines, line drawings. Um, talks about the PVD coated sapphire, sapphire and PVD coated is scratch resistant, does not mean it is scratch proof. Yes. Um, there are all the specs, the rundowns, um, kind of shows you for the time adjustment. Uh, it's a unidirectional bezel, 120 click. So that's the instruction manual. You get your warranty card. Very cool. You get cleaning cloth. You get an extra strap. Uh, in this case, for the Aegis, it's rubber. You get your tools, pretty nice. Um, let's see if we can focus on this. Yeah, it's gonna be a little tough in the light here. There you go, pretty cool. Um, and then a couple extra parts down there in the little side pocket. So at this point, you're probably wondering where is the watch? It should go in right there where the, uh, the little plastic protective uh, wrapper is uh, right in the center of the case and it is right here. So like I said, you have a couple different choices with this watch. For me, I went with the brushed finish because I felt like it would hide blemishes a little bit easier than the blasted or the, uh, the coated version. Um, especially, you know, uh, desk diving if you're wearing it every day. So I have the matte blue face, the blue bezel. 
uh, white indices and then they call this neon yellow for the second hand it's gonna be a little difficult to see I think but I'll try to get it there for you maybe come on it's a little challenging in the light here um, yeah so they call that neon yellow I would call it orange personally um, I kinda knew it was gonna look like that from the pictures that it that it was kinda more of an orange hue than a yellow uh, I think it looks really nicely it fits together re really well with the blue that shade of blue and the white and the orange um, I think it it's an awesome looking watch um, with the offset crown and the uh, the date window down there as well um, so you can see Oberst Morgan Aegis automatic um, yeah on the back which will be even harder to show here I can show you the clasp and kind of how everything fits together it's very secure has the Oberst Morgan um, logo on there so pop this open it's gonna be even even more difficult to see uh, just because of the uh, the lighting a little bit here but also um, you can probably kind of see some of the there you go some of the wording there so it basically just says Aegis um, it says Oberst Morgan timepieces around the outer edge and then it kind of goes through stainless steel, Miyota 9015, Sapphire, Helium Escape Valve. So that is that. Um, the one thing that I have heard about the 9015 is rotor noise. I haven't encountered that. Um, to me, the watch runs pretty pretty much as I figured it would. You know, it's not going to be the most silent watch um, compared to a lot of the Swiss timepieces, but it's perfect for me day to day. I don't notice it. Um, the the thing that I read that, that mentioned the rotor noise was if you when you go to shake your wrist, you can hear it um, winding in the case. I don't really notice that, but I don't wear this watch seven days a week either. So I'm in there, you know, I take it off for a couple of days, I've got to set the time. I've got to want, you know, get it going. Um, so to me, you know, maybe I'm just not as as um, kind of in touch with that as if I would wear it every single day. Or maybe my hearing is just not as acute as the person that did that review. So this is the Oberst Morgan Aegis uh, Justin that runs runs it. Um, super nice guy. I was in contact with him on my other watch that I bought from him, and this one gets back to you very quickly. You have to take into account that they're in Hong Kong, so depending on where you live, the time difference could be pretty significant. But, uh, but outside of that, you know, no, no issues. I've read the same thing on some of the forums of people that have, have uh, dealt with him and, and bought these watches. No issues. They all uh, have nothing but nice things to say for him. Seems like a really cool guy that's just interested in making uh, watches like this for, uh, for people that just enjoy wearing watches you know you have kind of a quote-unquote boutique watchmakers or micro brands or kind of however you want to say it and this is Oberst Morgan's um, diver style to fit into that realm I paid $279 for this shipped uh, which to me is a steal based on the the design and the craftsmanship and quality uh, of this watch I mean that to me it's a no-brainer most of the watches that I was looking at originally I was going to um, either build or buy a 55 Fathoms homage Seiko. Uh, that watch is bigger than this. Um, I feel like I, I don't have one to put side by side. But that was kind of what I was looking for at, at the time I bought this. And, uh, you know, you can find those on eBay or some of the forums. You're probably going to spend $300 or more. Uh, some of the other diver style watches from similar brands probably are going to be $500 or more. Um, now granted, some of those will have movements in them that people feel are significantly better or to some degree better. Uh, for me, the 9015 in an everyday wearer watch to where, you know, if I'm, if I bang it on the desk or I hit it on a door frame, you know, whatever, I'm not like super stressed out about, about, um, you know, messing it up, breaking it, having to get it serviced immediately, that kind of thing. So for what I was looking for, this fit that perfectly. Um, and like I said at the beginning of this, I'll pull this out of the way. 
and I will show you kind of for the next round of this this was the watch that started it all for me as far as kind of the boutique watches micro brand whatever whatever terminology you want to say uh, or to, to use to describe these watches the Bronco from Oberst Morgan uh, totally different style of watch compared to the ages uh, and and uh, but it's it's still has the same fit and finish and quality feel to it um, as, as the Aegis does. But we'll save that one for next time. And uh, if you have any questions or comments on the Aegis, uh, feel free to leave them down below. And I'll do my best to answer them. So, uh, like I said, I really love that watch. I've received a lot of compliments on it. And, uh, yeah, if you're looking for a diver-style watch that's not mass-produced, um, you know, not a Seiko. Not that there's anything wrong with Seiko or Citizen or any of those. I looked at a lot of those as well. They make great watches. But I just wanted something a little bit unique. Uh, and if you're looking for the same, I would highly, uh, highly recommend the uh, Oberst Morgan Aegis if you can find one because they are a little difficult.